We're going to get started on a second round of a project we started about two weeks ago. We took out a couple, two, three large Japanese ewes that were overgrown in this area. And we decided to leave the stumps in that project. We're going to actually go right over the top of them with some pulverized soil that we brought in. We're going to clean up some of these needles to start with, but not all of them. One of the things I like to do in landscaping, um, I take what it gives me the project. I don't like to haul out that much. I'll tend to cover up something, especially on a what I call a renovation project. We'll get that soil in, we'll do some plantings, and eventually we're going to bring in some riprap rock and we'll wrap this thing up. Since we'll be covering up these stumps here that were left over, we're going to put some of those needles right over the top and then we'll follow up with that soil. As I move these needles into place, I'm picturing where I'm going to put the soil and make that contour. I'm a big fan of contouring in landscapes. Just adding just a little bit of elevation in an area can make big difference in how it looks in the final project. So rather than having everything flat and rock, introduce some of that contouring. It'll make a big difference. You'll love it. Next step, we've got the majority of the needles raked back. We'll come in with the blower now, see if we can clean up that existing rock. Alright, that turned out pretty good. That rock cleaned up even better than I expected. Not too many needles left in there. Once we bring in some fresh new rock, that'll blend right in. We've also got a hose that's been plumbed in here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to move that back to the corner as well. Kind of get that out of the way. The main reason we want to move this irrigation setup now is once we bring in that new rock, we don't want to mess with that and dig it all up again. So we're taking the time to we'll go ahead and get this situated where it won't interfere with our project. Let's get back to landscaping. We are ready to start building our berms. We're gonna start with just dumping soil right over those old stumps where we piled up some of the needles. Wheelbarrow on each one of them, we'll feather them off. We'll see how high we wanna go. I believe I'm also gonna go ahead and bring that elevation up and crescendo off this boulder that was existing here. We're gonna pack this down a little bit as we go to firm it up. As we build that soil berm, we're gonna bring in some bigger field stone. That's gonna raise this up even more. And we don't wanna overblow it with the contour where it sticks out like a sore thumb being too big. So we'll be careful there. We're getting close on our berms. A Couple things to keep in mind that's very important if you're gonna do contouring is drainage. Once you build that berm, you're gonna block water flow depending on which way you're set up. Now, from the house going this way, we would block that water, but we've got good pitch going towards the camera. We brought in a small load of field stone the day before, so we're gonna go ahead and start placing some of those rocks. That's my next step. I like to get the berm mostly in place. We're gonna start placing some of the bigger field stone before we bring in the smaller rock. Before we work on our next level of rock, we're gonna 
do some plant placement first. We've got Russian sage. We'll fit in there somewhere. Carl Forrester feather reed grass. We also might be able to put in there a Bobo hydrangea. We've got a gold nugget barberry. And right on top of those stumps, we're going to end up putting some of the sedum, the sprawling sedum. They need a shallow root base, so it'll work out good for them to be right on top of those stumps. So we'll cut up the root system a little bit. That'll encourage those roots to break away from the root ball. We're at that final step now. We've got our plants in place. This is going to come together real nice. We're going to be using a granite riprap. Pretty jagged type rock, very rustic. Should blend in nice with this three quarter inch crushed granite. We'll start by dumping this rock, but then we'll have to move a little bit around by hand as well. We're not going to completely cover this whole area with the larger rip rack. We are going to leave some little pockets and veins where we'll come in with the smaller rock to give it some interest and some different contrast. So part of working with rocks, it's really just a matter of putting stuff in, stepping back, seeing if you like it. If you're doing something like this and you've never handled heavy loads before, dump half that weight out. Leave yourself just a little bit in the wheelbarrow. Makes it a little bit easier to get up on the high side instead of trying to do a full load. We're getting down to the final steps here. You can see we've got our larger riprap in through here. If you'll notice a couple areas, we left it quite blank. That's where some of the smaller one and a half inch rock is going to come through here and create that different contrast. Take a look too, some of the points. We didn't keep this whole bed in a circular fashion. We drifted that larger rock out, draws the eye out a little bit, makes it look less like an island. We're going to get after the rest of that project by feathering in some of this three quarter inch crushed granite. That's what's existing there. It's gonna match up pretty close. The other thing I'll mention as we start putting that rock in there, you wanna make absolutely certain you no more wheelbarrow dumping at this point. When you feather that in, it's all gonna be shovel and hand work. That's extremely important. If you start dumping this smaller rock on top of your riprap, you're gonna end up with a mound of three quarter inch rock and you're gonna lose that contrast and that texture that we're after. A little bit of foot pressure here works out fine. Kind of jiggle that rock into place. You'll notice here we're going heavier on purpose. Wanted to get that different look. Once we get most of this area covered, we'll wash this down, get any of the remaining rock off the boulders, and uh, then we'll do a little bit of a final tweaking. That water will make certain pockets show up. We'll do one more, water it down again, and this project's gonna be wrapped up. Rock can also come in quite dirty. That small three quarter inch rock, that was dirty. So now we're looking like a better match on our rock selection. So this water, I'm not only watering the plants, we're moving the rocks off the top of those boulders. We've gone from three overgrown yew evergreen shrubs here to some nice contouring, boulder work, and some new plants. So a whole new look for the front of the house here. 
I hope you enjoyed this garden hike. We'll see you again next video.